A Birthday Book by Cheryl Elizabeth, read by the author. Introduction. This book is written through the gifts of mediumship, a surprise to the author that her sister Cheryl wanted to share her life among these pages, a life filled with contrast, a life lived in the fullness and in the emptiness. The author was challenged writing the words, for it came with deep emotions and an understanding that each soul is here for great reason and grand purpose. The book is tenderly written by two sisters, one upon Mother Earth, the other dancing in the heavens, both free in the expansion to bring forth their own light, to share light with others, for the desire is to help another become aware of one's beauty and inner essence of grand light. The book is presented in the raw of deep honesty. The words place creating each sentence, creating a paragraph, creating a chapter, creating the book is to create a space to see the world through the war within and the peace abound. The contrast of life, a powerful book to be shared in the truth it was written. A birthday book by Sherry Elizabeth, sharing her heart to fill the empty hearts of others mature theme and subject matter. Chapter 5 From the Heart of Cheryl Elizabeth Just for the record, my life didn't end with drug abuse living on the streets. My life ended because I became ill. My body in the world of drugs and alcohol was also found victim to prey. Vulnerable with weakness, I became the victim of a disease that created my death and created my life. The last years of my life, I let go of the destruction, not fully, not completely, but enough to see that family had not gone away. That even after what I put everyone through, my family strong by my side, my death could have happened many times over. My death could have been one bad needle, and yet it was drugs that allowed me to live longer than I should have. It was drugs that took away the pain, if only for a moment's time. Isn't that the contrast? I battled drug addiction to take away my pain, and in the end, I embraced the drugs placed in my body to take away my pain. People don't see, really, the irony. They perhaps judge the addict, the alcoholic, and yet, at life end for the suffering, it is drugs that save or at least take the pain away. So let me take you on my journey of life, to some an adventure, to another one would not understand of the choices, not understand how one could fall prey to others, to be vulnerable, to be weak. Ones perhaps would not be able to understand why someone would choose a pathway of complete destruction, of let me say, character. I am choosing to write about my addictions in order to help one with their addiction. Perhaps my words would soothe the soul. And yet, I understand that when one is trapped in the world, it is difficult to get out alive. I want to start where it truly went downhill, where it truly took me to places where I did not belong, but perhaps I did belong, where it was my personal destruction that led me down the road of addictions tough characters, a rough world beyond what I knew, a world where people aren't really people. And yet, I met some people that have the capability to change the world. Smart people, people not so clever, people, just people of all kinds. I ended up living on the streets even after living with a loving family. Why would I leave a loving family to purposely live on the streets? The answer? Drugs, booze. The answer was because I became angry, angry at my life, with my creation. Perhaps I just needed something less so I could feel more then. Contrast is a beautiful thing, for when you are top dog, the world revolves around you. And when you are the top dog in your circle of friends, and yet the one in the family that was an embarrassment to the family, you like to keep being the top dog the smart one in the tribe, in the pack. Was I smart? Hell yes. Was I foolish? Hell yes. Why 
would I choose to write a book that perhaps to some would feel the subject doesn't quite catch their attention? Have you ever walked upon a city street and felt the vibration of the suffering? Have you ever truly looked into the eyes of one living among the concrete, among the destruction and harshness? Have you ever truly placed yourself in the shoes of one living on the street? Most would agree that if they are high members of society, or just living a life not on the street, living in a house or an apartment, living with heat and running water, living where the toilet flushes and the cable television is turned on, Does one truly look at the homeless, at the helpless? I did. I was raised in the goodness of the country, green grass and clean air, loving parents and loving siblings. I lived in a house with my spouse and newborn baby, knowing the warmth of a loving family, and yet to look into the eyes of the drug addict on the street, to look into the eyes of the prostitute, to look into the eyes of the pimp, truly takes deep courage. I found my way to see the world through the streets. I left my life of goodness. I left my family. I left all things that I loved deeply and dearly, for I knew that I was top dog in the wrecking lot. And for some reason, I felt among the ones I loved that I was the wrecking lot. Getting into drugs is truly like selling your soul. Getting into the dark corners of the streets is really selling your soul and your body. Getting into drugs and the dark corners, the violence of mankind on the streets is selling your soul, your body, and your mind. It truly is selling your life for a life not worth living, selling who you are as each moment becomes life-threatening. And one will ask, why choose that if you had it all? And I would answer, Why not choose something that is right before one's eyes? Ones turn away from people not living among society. Turn a cheek, turn their heads, turn away. For why not turn away? The one on the street had a choice. Or did they? I had a choice. Each soul does. But here is what I wish to point out. The choices are made from where one is standing. If one has a gun pointed to one's head, What is the choice? Is it to obey knowing life is ended? Or is it to choose to end a life for freedom? A gun to one's head stops the world. A gun to one's head being the victim. For the one holding the gun is the top dog. Choices are made each step along the pathway of life. But before the judgment, before the condemnation, please consider what the choices for one was or is. Please consider that not all choices lead one to freedom. Living on the streets takes smarts. You have to be smart. You have to outwit the one holding the gun, metaphor or not. You have to be top dog, or at least feel you are around the top dogs. To fit in takes a smart mind. Now, I know. Ones will challenge and say, there isn't anything smart about drug abuse and street living. And I would challenge that and answer, try it for one night, for one day. Try it for a week, a month. Try it for a year, a decade, and see how much you need your intellectual mind in order to survive. Not everyone can be the top dog. Not everyone has it in them to hold a gun to another's head. But let me tell you, when your back is against the wall in survival, you use your smarts, your logic, your power, because if you don't, the trigger is pulled. Why do people go to the streets? Why? Have you thought about it for a length of time? It isn't just about being poor or broke or broken. It is not just because there was nowhere else to go, for I had a family that would help me. I had family that truly loved me, and they could never understand why I chose the path I did for a time in my life. When people find themselves among the streets to live, there is a knowing of family unlike any other family. There is a coming together of people, of suffering. People needing people, and not people needing people in happiness. People needing people in the suffering. For in another suffering, it is easy to find your own. 
It is easy to know that no matter how hard it is, there is always someone else to remind you that you live whole and well compared to the depths of hell that one can actually live. Poverty is only the outside, if you will. Look beyond the poverty. Look beyond people that have not bathed. Look beyond all that is tangible and free to judge so harshly. Look beyond the person on the street and ask yourself, how did they get here? Did you know there are wealthy people living on the street? Has that occurred to you? Wealthy people living in the depths of poverty. And why? For what? And the answer profound. For the wealthy like contrast as well. The wealthy come to the streets to pretend they are someone they are not. Why? And as I mentioned, it is a family like no other. One has to use one's intellect to survive. Now the wealthy pretending they are poor can have the greatest addictions. For isn't it money that is needed to buy the drugs? Isn't it money that is needed to buy the booze? And isn't it something to see the world through the eyes of poverty when wealth is all they know? The next time you look at the homeless, at the helpless, I encourage you to feel, not to feel in judgment, to feel with your heart. For when one can feel with their heart, one feels with their own soul. Living on the streets is like that, feeling your soul in the depths of hell and wanting the heavens to pull you out, wanting to be pulled out, and yet wanting to remain just for the test. Now, as I write this, my little sister is concerned. She is concerned that people won't help ones on the street thinking they may be rich. But you know, rich is not about money. People have yet to discover that. Not people, but most feel rich because of the money in the bank. I felt rich among the poor, among the poverty streets, because I was rich in being the top dog among my people. I was rich when someone gave me their last of anything they had. Don't get me wrong. I was top dog because I gave to the struggling all that I had. See, there is a family that a regular family doesn't know about. Family comes in all sizes and in all colors. Family doesn't have to be blood. Family is knowing that one would give all they had to be there for the other. People needing people. The wealthy and the poor, the in-between and the ones that haven't had the chance to truly care about anything spoiled in their own family, not understanding the truest meaning of family. It is rare there is one among the poverty that is wealthy in financial wealth, but it is there. It is there for the contrast. I always said the difference between one with money being a drug addict or alcoholic and the poverty stricken being the drug addict and alcoholic is only judgment. The poor are bums on the street and the rich They are just living life to their fullest because they can. Both drug addicts, both alcoholics, and yet the separation in money is the judgment. The rich are praised and understood of their challenges. The poverty, the poor, are harshly judged for allowing space to be on the street. Isn't it fascinating? I thought so. And that is part of the reason I chose that pathway. Isn't it fascinating to live in such contrast, such awareness of the raw life people can live and the pampered life people can live? Who looks their nose down upon who? Is it the poverty cursing the wealthy? Or is it the wealthy cursing the poverty? It's the end of chapter five. Thank you for listening.